to Braintree High School here at the Burger Gymnasium. I'm Walt Frey in the coverage here on BCAM TV as we are getting ready for Braintree and Natick. Varsity Boys Basketball, Mike Watson and the coverage as we are ready for the starting lineup. And first, the starting five for Natick. It'll be Chandler alongside Fuse. Number 13, Fleming, one of the captains. For the Red Hawks. Number 23, Captain Mulholland. And number 24, O'Neill. Head coach, Mike Masto. And now the starting five for the home team, Braintree. Up, number three, Moore. Up, number five, senior. With Carson Jones, number five. Number 14, Ellie. And the starting center for Braintree is Lemire. Head coach Bob Crook. And we will now pause for the play of the anthem, and we will be back with the opening tip in a moment. Here at Braintree High School, getting ready for the opening tip. And having an issue right now with the score clock as the clock is off. Going to have to reset that, and they are working on it right now. And then we will have the tip. Parsons Gomes set to jump against O'Neill. Tip in favor of the visitors from Natick as they will have the first possession of this ball game. Very important contest here in the Bay State as the opening foul coming on the in pass towards O'Neill as he is fouled in front of the hoop. And the first free throws just 13 seconds in. was converted by O'Neill. 
and does not get the roll on the second as the ball goes out of bounds in Braintree's favor. So one out of two at the line, and the Womp's first offensive possession is here with 7.45 to go in the first quarter. It'll be Moore now taking it right at the basket, draws some contact, and how was that not a foul? As he took it to the hoop, and the shot actually went up and over the hoop as Nadek gets the ball back. That was a lot of contact on the opening possession. Nadek takes it inside, Lemire defending, and the layup is good by Chandler. So the first bucket of the game, it's 3-0. Brantley looking to get on the board. As we're approaching a minute in here to the first quarter. Parsons Gomes attacks the basket, leaves it outside for Lemire, takes it in the paint, cuts back, then to his right hand, and the shot way too strong. And Braintree a quick 0 for 2 from the field. The Red Hawks now feed it down low, and the pass did not connect. Braintree with the steal. Back up the floor as they find the top of the key for Parsons Gomes. Six and a half to go here in the opening quarter. Moore steps to his left, fires a three, is off to his left, and he's now an 0 for 2 for the start. Six twenty to go here in the first quarter. As the kick to the outside, and the shot no good. Branchy with the rebound into the hands of Kelly. And Branchy wants a very quick and early timeout here in the first quarter with 6.12 to go. Brantry still looking for their first points of this game. We will stay with it here. Usually we break with the timeouts, but as the game had just started, obviously not really going to go into a break this early. Brantry at 8-3 and three on the season, coming off of now four consecutive victories over Milton and Wellesley at home, and then Brookline and Framingham on the road, and taking on the Red Hawks, who are 9-2, and two, so... Two teams, very evenly matched, and Natick, as they have been really the last few seasons, have been a tough team to beat. Much tougher to beat at their own gym, but always going to be a tough contest in the Bay State Conference. No easy game, generally. But Braintree, obviously not the way you wanted to start. to go. Brantry will inbound under their Natick, or actually their own basket. As Moore brings it over half court. So an early timeout from head coach Crook, who has this team playing some good basketball right now at 8-3. and three. One of the best starts they've had in a long time. As the ball is going to go out of bounds off of Parsons Gomes and Brantry with a turnover. Right now having trouble getting the ball towards the basket and getting good shots off. To the corner it goes. As cutting into the paint, the right-handed shot is good. Sweeping through traffic as Mulholland now on the board. It's 5-0. Brantry needing something to go their way as we've near, nearly played three minutes here into this first quarter and Brantry without a, without a point. Down on the block, it's Ellie. Back to the outside for Moore and Parsons going. Still 15 left on the shot clock but Brantry with nothing going to the basket. Finally taking it inside the paint. It's a shot fake and Lemire Caught the player up in the air, and that was dangerous for O'Neill, who got caught up in the air and fell awkwardly on his way to the ground. So Brantry will get a fresh shot clock to work with, and they'll inbound underneath. High arching pass that Moore is able to collect. To the outside, Kelly sidesteps, does not shoot it. And Brantry's gun shy a little bit. Moore trying to draw some contact, fires it up, does not get it to go. And the battle for the loose ball, and it goes into the hands 
of O'Neal. Back up over half court as Brentry gonna go to the bench very early here in the opening quarter, trying to search for some offense. And they're gonna change out four players on the fly here. Right towards the cup as Fuchs brings it outside and the three-point shot is good by Mulholland. Nothing but net and it's eight nothing. The Red Hawks jumping in front and Brentry's gotta be careful here with a nine and two Red Hawk team who clearly is a very strong opponent. Don't want to dig yourself too big of a hole. Lemire left alone for three, and he nails it. Braintree needed that in the worst way. So Lemire sticks a three, and Braintree right back in it, down 8-3. Right towards the basket, Chandler. He got caught inside the paint. Good defense. As it's back out towards half court. Still 20 left on the shot clock. Mulholland with the ball. He's got five points to lead all scores. Looking for the pass. It was there, but they didn't go with it. Five on the shot clock. Chandler's going to have to do something with the ball here. Goes to his left hand. Chandler inside. Good defense and a shot clock violation. That will not count as O'Neill missed it anyway. And Braintree goes for a full sale of changes. A full starting five coming in off the bench, including the inbound player, Connor. Connor into the hands of McClory. McClory coming off of one of his better games on the road in the victory over Framingham. Looking underneath, and the pass is stolen as Branchy trying to thread the needle. McClory hustling back, and the bucket is good at the other end. So that's really the worst thing that could have happened for Braintree after you make a change in personnel to have a steal like that on a bad pass. Those are the kind of mistakes that can't happen leading to transition buckets. Braintree down seven. As now it's Hankinson to the outside, a three from Coughlin, no good. Branch's only basket in this first quarter has been a three from nine, who's now on the bench. Fleming with the ball, he cuts to his right, kicks back outside, Mulholland will try again, this time no good. Excellent box out by Coughlin, and Branch with an easy rebound. 2.20 to go here in the first quarter as we continue our live stream broadcast here on BCAM TV. Uh, Braintree basketball versus Natick. 10-3 is the score in favor of the visitors. It's now Hankinson. Pulls up from 15 out and no good on the shot. Offensive rebound and put back is good. Good second chance effort as that one knocked in by nine. Braintree back within five. Under two minutes to go now in the first quarter. Mulholland takes it inside, decides to bring it back to the perimeter. Now Chandler, and the pass is over the head of the intended target. And now Nadek going to the bench. Head coach Mike Masto not happy with what he just saw on the other end. After Branch, you got an easy bucket. And there was six players on the floor, and that should have been a technical foul if players already resumed. If these refs knew what was good right now, they would make the right decision here, and I'm hoping they do, because that is a mistake on the Natick side. You've got to make the right call, and they're not going to do it. That's terrible. Own up to the mistake. Head coach for Natick knows he got away with one, and that's really not the right thing to do in this game. In a game meaning so much, that is an untimely mistake by Natick, but you gotta make them pay for it. They made the mistake. Refs let play go, and that's gonna be something Branch is gonna sit on for a little while, but you feel slighted, you gotta make the play now with the ball. I don't think I've ever seen that actually happen where play starts with six players on the floor. As McClory cuts to the basket, has to bring it back outside. It's Nime in the paint, trying to back him down, swinging up with the right hand, no good on the shot in close. And a takeaway. As Hankinson now up over half court. Final minute of the opening quarter, Braintree with just five points on the board, got to start scoring. Thankfully for Braintree, the defense has been pretty good. They've held Nadek to 10. Here's Connor for three. 
That would have been a big bucket at the other end. Connor gets back and forces a mistake at the other end as Costello cannot run that one down. So the subs have come in for Natick and they've turned it over in two straight possessions, which is going to drive head coach Masto crazy. Certainly going to draw the ire of the coach. Final 40 seconds now as Braintree trying to get as close as they've been in a while. And a foul going to go on Braintree for an offensive foul. Going to call a moving screen on nine. So sloppy play continuing here in a very important game, Bay State Conference. About a half a second difference between the shot clock and game clock. To the outside, and a travel. Too much passing on that possession. Try to run the clock out, and Bernard shuffle those feet. The sophomore, three straight offensive possessions, ending in a turnover for the Red Hawks. Ranger with the ball here in the final 10 seconds. McClory looking back door. Pass is not there. Final five seconds. Braintree almost throwing it away. Hankinson's going to have to shoot. And he draws some contact and no foul called as Hankinson trying to draw some contact. And it looked like he did. But Braintree out of sorts in that opening quarter. Scoring just five points. They got a couple of good looks from the outside but did not convert from the perimeter. And Braintree with a five-point deficit after eight minutes of action here at home. So we will... Resume in a moment as we take a break in between quarters. 10-5, Branchy trailing, Nadick. Back here to the Hergis Gymnasium, start of quarter number two. Branch is trailing by five. Mike Wasser bringing the coverage here on BCAM TV. So Branch is trying to battle back from down five as they have a similar lineup in that finished the first quarter. Crook trying to draw the foul, sends to the outside now for McClory. 15 left on the shot clock. McClory spins. Now has to kick it back outside for Hankinson. Another possession that Branch doesn't have much going to the basket. Crook fires the three, it's short. Back up the floor, Smallholland makes the pass and able to find an open player underneath and using some pretty good body control is Costello to finish at the rim. 12 to 5, Braintree back down 7. Looking underneath for Coughlin, drives it inside and gets the roll. Another important basket. Right now, Branch is trying to hang in there. As Branch with a little bit of pressure in the backcourt. Up over half court it goes. Mulholland hands it over for Maloyan. 6.45 to go in the half. Branch through down five. Nadick with the ball. And their road red uniform. Back to the corner. A three point try, no. As Branchy with the rebound, back up the floor, it's Crook. Crook will spot up and fire a three, no, as Nime now gets the rebound. Back to the perimeter, Branchy looking for another outside shot as Coughlin decides against it. A bullet pass that was finally picked up by Nime and he turns it over again. It's the second turnover here as Hankinson going diving for the ball and Branchy wants a timeout. They call a jump ball first. 
That's the kind of effort that's going to see extra minutes by Hankinson. Possession arrow remains with Natick. To the outside, Chandler drives along the baseline and his shot's no good. Parsons going for the rebound. Back up the floor is McClory. Gets the ball back from Coughlin as French is trying to draw within three or two with a three-point shot. More back into the game for Branch is trying to provide a little bit of offense. Brook 0 for 2 from downtown since he's come in. Back to the outside for Moore. Drives it down on the block. And Parsons going, pushed to the back. There have not been many fouls called here in this game. Inside is Coughlin driving against two and able to lay it in. Nice bucket there. Twelve nine is the score. As French is trailing by three. Backdoor feed and a wild pass somehow found its way to the intended target. Five minutes of the half. Fleming trying to draw the foul, does not get the call. And an air ball fired up. We're at the end of the shot clock. Moore now takes it inside, kicks to the corner. Return feed, good ball movement. Coughlin with a couple of baskets here since coming in. Still 10 left on the shot clock. Moore takes it towards the basket, drives through, kicks it off. Good movement underneath, and a little shot underneath that did not get the roll by Diuti. Underneath, Chandler, awkward looking shot, doesn't get the roll, and Braintree back with it. 4.05 to go here as Crook thought about spotting up, and then he carried with the ball. So Crook has really struggled since entering into the game as he makes his way to the bench. Rancher going back for a couple of starters as Kelly enters. Nadek who started out really hot has had a lot of turnover since and have allowed Rancher to hang around. And that one nearly stolen. Back to the perimeter. Another three, another miss. Hustling after that is Diuti cannot get the ball. And another offensive possession. 3.35 to go here in the second quarter. And a travel inside. The turnovers continue to pile up. Braintree had some fluidity on offense right now. They'd be up in this game. The defense has held a strong Natick team to just 12 points. The French has only scored nine of their own. To the outside, Moore left alone for three. No good. And Moore, who hasn't had much time or space to shoot here tonight, that was his best look, but it was from pretty far out. And another travel. Mulholland expecting contact. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the big men for Natick. First it was O'Neal and now Mulholland as Branch with the backdoor feed. Oh, pretty look. Nice look underneath and Moore with the little alley-oop layup. 
And Braintree within one, as close as they've been since the start. 2.45 to go in the half, and the bank shot no good. As Kelly with the rebound. Braintree doing a nice job on the glass. Back up the floor as Braintree looking for the first lead here tonight. 2.35 to go here in quarter number two. Braintree down, 12-11. Kelly, nice dribbling. Kicks outside. Parsons Gomes to the corner. 15 left on the shot clock as Moore had it poked away. Moore takes it inside. Outside, Diuti. Diuti for three. No good. As Braintree with another good look from the outside, but not knocking down the timely shot. Neither side really shooting all that well, especially from the outside. As Mulholland fires away, missed from the outside. Offensive rebound by O'Neill, and he draws a pair of free throws. Final 2.02 here of the opening half. And the first free throw is good. So O'Neill with his only two points coming at the free throw line as he split his first attempt at the line. And that was just seven seconds in. And again does it. Splits the free throws, Braintree trailing by two. Ellie takes it to the basket, trying to draw a foul, none there. Moore gets the miss, and kicks to the outside. This time it's Kelly for three, and again, the shot will not go. Back up the floor, and O'Neal can't catch the pass. Good strong bounce pass, but right now, the Red Hawks making a lot of mistakes, but they're still holding on to a two-point lead. Neither side has played particularly well here in this first half. But kind of expected a tight game between two teams with very similar records. As Parsons Gomes can't get it over the front of the rim. He'd like that shot back as that would have tied the score at 13. 120 to go as neither side has had the big shot right now. So obviously a lot of time left and a foul gonna come on a moving screen. Bad foul away from the ball. So Nime gonna come back in. Parsons Gomes gonna sit down with 1.12 to go here in the half. The second personal going on O'Neill, who's had a tough first half. A couple of turnovers, a couple of fouls, just the two points. Trying to feed it down on the block is nine, but they didn't get it there. Moore takes it through contact. Moore lays it up and can't get it to stay down. Another good look at the basket and Moore continuing to struggle. Just the two points on the board so far. Nice hands by McClory, able to rip it away. Three on two up the floor, almost threw it away. McClory gets his own missed pass and lays it in as Braintree has tied the score. McClory seeing a lot of the floor here in this first half. And he pokes it away. Moore gets the ball. And a travel going to be called. Wow. That's a tough call. So Moore who went diving for the ball went flying on the floor with it. Momentum carried him and a travel was called with 18 seconds to go here in the half. Tied at 13. Final seconds now. Mulholland gonna take it at Lemire. Mulholland steps back, fires for three, no good. And the ball pops into the hands of Moore who fires it from three quarters court, it wouldn't have counted anyway. And that is the way the first half comes to a close. So what was a disappointing start for the home team ends with a pretty good finish to the first half with Braintree and Natick right back where we started, tied at 13. As we head towards halftime and a break in between halves as we have third quarter action after a break here on BCAM TV. 
as again, a tie game at 13, five points for Mulholland to lead the Red Hawks, four for Coughlin to lead Braintree as we break in between half.
Welcome back to the Herd Gymnasium, start of the second half. Mike Wasser ran the coverage here on VCAM TV as we are underway here in the third quarter. Brancy with the ball here in a 13-13 game. Backdoor feed for Parsons Gomes, kicked outside. Ellie for three, it's off the mark. As Braintree continues to struggle from the outside. Neither side knocking down shots with consistency. And to the basket, and the layup won't stay down. As Fleming couldn't get the layup. Another offensive possession for Braintree. As they look for their first lead here tonight. Back to the outside, and Slameri knocked down a triple earlier. No good from the outside. Six forty-five to go here in the third quarter. Neither side has scored yet, and a travel before the foul. Rentry again getting. A turnover at the other end, trying to capitalize. Moore pulls up from 12, can't get it to go. This has been a defensive battle. Offenses really just have not been consistent here tonight. Gotta imagine this has gotta be the worst both teams have shot during the course of the season so far. Both sides continue to get caught in the air as well. Fighting for the fake as the shot is good and close. And Nadek back in front. 15-13, a two-point lead for Nadek. Eighteen left on the shot clock. It'll be a three from Lemire. He knocks it down. His second triple here tonight. And Braintree back for the first time in front, 16-15. 5-10 to go here in the third quarter. Braintree again defending well. Cut to the basket, double teamed. O'Neill thought about the three, takes it inside against Lemire, tough shot, and he missed it. Back up the floor, it's Parsons Gomes, as Braintree did not have the numbers. Kelly, with a nice quick ball fake, takes it to the basket and scores! Nice bucket underneath by Owen Kelly. His first basket here tonight, and Braintree with a three-point lead. And a timeout utilized by head coach Masto for Natick. And Braintree has stormed out to an 18-15 lead here in the third quarter as they lead by three with 4.41 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a break in the action.
Play resuming. We'll see what the Red Hawks have drawn up. And a travel. Braintree trying to extend their lead. Lemire in traffic, tries to bank it in, can't get it to go, and Kelly finds the loose ball. Kelly takes it towards the basket, had it swatted out of his hand. As Moore now takes it inside, and a foul going to be called on the floor. A push going to go on Fleming. And four changes, four subs for the Red Hawks. Stand on the floor is the junior Farrell. Parsons goes left alone and he scores. Braintree now with their largest lead here tonight. They're up five, 20 to 15. Nine and two Natick, eight and three Braintree. And a good one here today at the Hergen Gymnasium at Braintree High School. On a Friday night, January 26th. Tough shot at the side of the hoop, and it is secured by Ellie, who's now triple teamed, and the ball is tied up as possession is going to stay with Braintree, it looks like. Oh, nope, it's going to change. It's going to be Natick Ball. Back up the floor, and the shot with the left hand is no good. Red Hawks can't buy a basket. Kelly up the floor, outside to Moore, takes it to the basket. Moore to the outside, Parsons Gomes, as they move it around the outside. Ellie with a couple of shot fakes, lays it off the glass, can't get it to stay down. Ellie battling for the ball and can't tie it up. I'm going to find his way back in the game at the next whistle. 2.40 to go here in the third quarter. Nice backdoor feed, and the layup this time is good. Bukartaka with the bucket. Braintree with a three-point lead and the ball. Two players in the exact same spot as Moore now with it. Moore trying to draw the foul. Still 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Got to move to the basket now. Five left on it. And that was lucky that wasn't a charge as the shot from Ellie is off the glass, but an offensive rebound. Fresh shot clock to work with. Final minute and 40 of the third. Inside Moore, yes! Finally, Moore able to get a bucket. He's got four. Frankie back up by five. And a foul gonna be before the shot. Gonna go on Kelly. Is mishandled. Moore back up the floor. Moore at the bucket. He scores. The speed of Moore takes it coast to coast and Braintree up by seven. 24-17 as head coach Masto is upset 
at one end, his team turns it over and gives up an easy layup at the other. As we pause with 104 to go here in the third, as Braintree has opened up a seven point lead, 24 17. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Braintree High School as we are finishing off the third quarter and a terrible pass off the inbound. And another full sale of changes as the Red Hawks have looked way out of sorts here in this third quarter. Still got a lot of time left in this game though. As Nine pulls up, that one rejected. Gets his own block shot and lays it in. Actually worked out better for Braintree as nine now with four points. And Braintree has opened up a nine point lead. As that one tapped away from behind, but Braintree cannot get the ball. Final half minute. There's a five second difference between the shot clock and game clock. Braintree should see the ball one more time barring a offensive, or a offensive rebound and or a foul. As the ball was stolen for a moment, and now the ball still can't be tied up. Final seconds now of the shot clock. I don't know if Natick knows about it. They don't get it off. And they're gonna have to put some time back on the clock. That should be at least four and a half seconds on the clock. I don't think they're gonna change it though. They should be putting more time back on the clock. And I don't think they did. So 2.2 left, Braintree looking for a miracle final shot. More from half court, and it'll be good if it goes, but obviously the degree of difficulty on that shot, extremely high, probably about a 1% chance of that shot going in, as that is the way the third quarter closes. Braintree with a phenomenal third. They take a halftime lead, or a halftime tie, into a third quarter lead of nine, 26-17. As we head to the fourth, Eight minutes of action left here at the Hergert Gymnasium as we'll be back for fourth quarter action after this. here at Braintree High School, start of the fourth quarter. Michael Wasser bringing the coverage here on BCAM TV, 26-17, Braintree by nine as we begin the final eight minutes. Coughlin trying to take it to the basket, lays it off the glass and can't get the layup to go. That would have been a very big basket. Would have put Braintree up by 11. Coughlin, who's had a nice game, just couldn't get the ball to stay down. See if the Red Hawks have a run in them here in this fourth quarter. To the outside, and the three is knocked down. A timely shot. 
as Fleming with his first basket here tonight. 26-20, this game far from over. With the low scoring game on our hands. McClory gives it away, gets it back. Takes it to the basket, Coughlin now. Coughlin driving and turns it over. Got to get back in the play now if you're Coughlin. At the other end, the layup is good and Braintree with a costly turnover leading to an easy bucket at the other end. Those are the kind of mistakes you can't make in big games. I think Braintree right now being gun shy with, they got to be ready to shoot it. And a foul going to be called before the ball was knocked away. McClory had the open shot at the top of the key, did not take it, and that ultimately t ended up ch costing Braintree on that possession. Not saying he would have made the shot, no guarantee, but those are the kind of shots you have to take. It actually put Braintree to a disadvantage not shooting that shot. But nonetheless, that doesn't excuse the turnover from Coughlin. 6.15 to go here in the fourth, as Coughlin gets the return feed, kicks outside, and he's turned it over again. McClory after the ball and the layup no good as fighting for the loose ball and traveling before the timeout was called. Head coach Mastos got to be very close to getting a technical foul here. I am surprised that they're allowing this much to be going. This ref taking a lot of heat right now but that's way too much from the coach not to be warranted a technical. Braintree wants a timeout with 5.56 to go in the ball game. Just holding on to a four point lead now. Too many mistakes here in this fourth quarter. Has opened the door for the Red Hawks to come back. As we take a break, 5.56 to go. Braintree up four with the ball when we come back. Final 5.55. Kelly back into the game. Braintree trying to find a way to play error free here the next few possessions. Kelly gets the ball back, drives to the lane. That one partially deflected and it goes out of bounds. Lemire checking back in. He's got six points to lead all scores or to lead Actually, yes, to lead all scorers in this game. It's crazy to think here in the fourth quarter, six points is the leading scorer. Moore also a six for Braintree. At the basket, it is Nime. Nice finish with the left hand. And Nime joins the scoring parade with six. 28-22. At the basket, missing with the left hand. Getting the miss, though, is O'Neal, and that is a big-time rebound and putback by the senior center. Braintree brings the ball over half court. McClory takes it to the basket and lays it in. Nice take by McClory, who's got four. Back to a six point game. As that one missed, Braintree with the rebound. Back up the floor, trying to get it to McClory, who can't save it. Braintree trying to force it up the floor. Don't mind it if you can make the right pass, but obviously the pass was too strong. No need to force it. You have 
the lead, six point lead and the ball. You don't want to make any of those mistakes. Try and close it out. Cutting back, Mulholland left it short. They get their miss, Mulholland will try for three and he nails it. Raintree giving up two big offensive rebounds here in this fourth quarter. And that one turns into a three from Mulholland. So 30 to 27 now the score with 4.18 to go and it doesn't look like this one's gonna go away anytime soon. Mulholland now the leading scorer of tonight's game with eight points after that latest triple. Gotta give the Red Hawks credit for hanging around, but obviously they're a very good team with a nine and two record. Braintree, a very good team as well at eight and three. But both sides have made some very uncharacteristic mistakes here this season. In a season where they've had a lot of things go their way based on obviously those records I just mentioned. But playing against a strong opponent now, we've seen a few flaws kind of pop up in each side's game. And now in clutch moments, we'll see which team will arise as victors. Looks like Frenchy going to come back out with the lineup of Kelly with Moore. McClory, Nime, and Lemire. Five on the floor for Braintree with 4.15 to go and the ball. Down three. Nice backdoor feed. Moore! Oh, able to avoid contact. And he scores. A pretty finish underneath from Moore. Braintree back up by five. Moore now with eight. 3.50 to go. Mulholland traveled. Oh, wow, they call a foul there. Wow, that is a tough call to go. That looked like a clear travel, but the ref's calling that one a grab. That is a lucky break there for the Red Hawks. Trying to feed the ball down the block, and they turn it over anyway. So the ball don't lie there for Braintree as they get it back. Final 335, a five point lead and the ball. Moore's made a couple of big plays here in this fourth quarter. We'll see if he can make another one. Braintree running a little bit of clock. Don't need to force anything. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Nime taking it inside. Nime throws it up. He got knocked down as Lemire gets the ball. Back outside for more. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Plenty of time. Moore now with five. Moore tries to split through. Moore had it knocked into the backcourt. And that turns into a 30 second, a 35 second. Oh, after the play, a lot of contact as Moore gets knocked down. Certainly embellished that, but I don't know how that's not a technical foul. I don't know what game these refs are watching. I understand Moore definitely embellished that, but that's... A clear push after the play. I don't know what, how that's not an offensive foul on the, or a technical foul in this case, because obviously it was a dead ball play, but in a game like this, you're down five. That's two free throws and the ball. I mean, that's just a huge missed call by the refs, regardless of how you want to slice that. That is just terrible. Do I want the refs factoring in? No, but that's one they clearly missed. Mulholland from way downtown, it's short. But another offensive rebound as Kelly Kent gobble up that board. Chandler traveled, but they didn't call that either. Down the lane, swallowing up and in is Mulholland, who's had all the big plays in this game for them. He's got 10. Raintree slighted on a couple of plays on that possession. As that one is going to be knocked out of bounds. And Coughlin going to check back in for Lemire. I don't know if they called that a kickball or if that just went out of bounds. 
That's the discussion right now. If it's a kickball, the shot clock should be reset to 35. If not, then it stays here at 25. So it's gonna stay where it is, it looks like. Two twenty-five to go, so Branchard can take it to right around the two-minute mark here if they hold on for the final 25 of the shot clock. 32-29 is Braintree holding on by three. Nice backdoor feed, but the ball finds its way through the hands of Parsons Gomes and somehow into the hands of Moore. Moore takes it down the lane, tries to draw the foul, and fires up a wild shot. And that one goes up over the hoop. You didn't need that shot if you're Moore. Head coach Crook obviously relaying that message to his player. Moore trying to draw some contact and Obviously, you got to appreciate that type of effort, but you got to stay in control of the game. Final minute and 50. A three-point try to tie it. It's good. Chandler now has seven, and we're tied at 32. Braintree doing a lot of losing things here in this fourth quarter. With key moments, they have turned it over and gotten bad shots on a couple of possessions here in this fourth quarter. What was at one point a nine point lead has gone away and Mulholland on the other end has made a lot of winning plays for the Red Hawks. And the latest shot from Chandler, obviously a very timely three. But Braintree will try and recover here with 1.39 to go, a timeout on the floor, 32-32 when we return. coming out of the timeout and that was very close to a backcourt play by McClory who was lucky that that was not called. Let's we'll see what Brancher comes out of the timeout with. Nearly picked off. Brancher just hasn't had a winning play here in the fourth quarter yet and they still don't as the three is missed by Moore. Trying to close out a strong opponent. Braintree has allowed the Red Hawks to Climb back from nine down. Chance for the Red Hawks to take the lead here with a minute and change. To the basket, Chandler gets it to go. And Chandler with his ninth point puts Natick in front 34-32. This would not be a good loss for Braintree if they cannot come back here. Moore trying to draw the foul. Big screen set by Coughlin. Coughlin gets it to the outside, it's thrown away. Another bad turnover by Braintree and a timeout taken as Coughlin has made a couple of big time mistakes here in the second half. Braintree continuing to make bad plays here in this fourth quarter and it's put them in a very tough spot to win this game now. Down two and the opponent with the ball as Nadick will come back with it when we return in a moment.
play resuming. Here with 38 seconds to go. As that one picked off by McClory. McClory gets it over to Moore. Braintree underneath looking for the tying score. Back outside is Kelly. Kelly bobbles. Braintree outside. Coughlin for the lead. No good. Ball spinning out of bounds. And a timeout taken by Natick. And what is McClory doing? And McClory with a boneheaded play after the whistle. He is lucky he wasn't teed up. And head coach Crook is irate, as am I up here in the booth. That is something you can't do. No matter how frustrated you are that your team did not score, you don't do that. That is very, very lucky. And Braintree very fortunate that they weren't teed up there after that happened. Anytime you spike the ball like that after the play, it should be an automatic tee. And we've seen it a couple times not called this season, so that is surprising. But with 22 seconds left, Braintree had as good of a look as you can ask for to take the lead on a three by Coughlin, but he did not knock it down. But Natick again has made some big time mistakes just as Braintree has here in this game, including a turnover right off the last inbound play from where we will see an inbound now. So we'll see if Braintree can get another steal. Shot clock is off. Braintree will either have to gamble for a steal or hope for a miss. Or play the foul game. Neither side has shot many free throws here tonight. So we'll see what type of inbound play this time. Nadek not finding many plays. I can't imagine they have many timeouts left. And Braintree with a very quick time, a uh, very quick foul. I'm surprised they fouled that quickly. Well, they must be needing many fouls now to get over the limit. But I think I like Braintree's chances here. Nadek has shown but they've had trouble here trying to inbound from this spot. Mulholland able to break through and get past the press. And Braintree still not over the limit. Now the ball will be inbounded at half court. 17.7 left. Still looking. O'Neill able to catch it and he's fouled. Into the backcourt now as Fleming gets the ball and Braintree fouls yet again. And now it looks like we finally will see some sort of free throws here in this fourth quarter. Crazy to think in a game like this, obviously with a very low scoring game, you would expect both sides to be in foul trouble, but that's not the case. Crowd trying to do their best to make the player miss. And he does. So Nadek now with a big time miss at the line. And Branchy wants a timeout before the next free throw with 14.1 to go on neither side showing that they want to win this game with costly, costly mistakes at the end. But Nadek with one more free throw when we return from the timeout up by two. Free throw is good as Fleming makes it a three-point game. Braintree needs a three and Nadek commits the foul. And 
Braintree going to take another timeout with the ball at half court. Looks like Natick playing the following game. Maybe they're going to try and force Braintree, instead of allowing him to shoot a three, they're going to try and foul and make him earn at the free throw line and keep that one point lead. Not sure. We'll see what happens when we return. We'll talk through this timeout as we just saw our timeout moments ago. But with 11 seconds left, setting the stage for the end of this one, 35-32, Natick by three. Braintree has the ball at half court. And head coach Crook right now trying to line up something for his team to tie the score. Moore with eight points leading the way for Braintree. He's their best outside shooter. Got to put your best shooters into the game right now. So final seconds getting set to come off the clock here at Braintree High School in what has been a great game. Not necessarily a well-played game, but a tight game between 9-2 and two Natick and 8-3 and three Braintree. As the Womps trying to continue their four-game winning streak, but that's certainly in jeopardy right now. Ball to be inbounded by Crook. As Braintree searches for a big bucket here in the fourth quarter to try and tie the score up. Here comes Moore. More hands to Kelly. Kelly will try a three to tie it. No good. And the foul is going to be committed. That was an okay look from three. A little bit tough of a shot from Kelly. Didn't have a clean look, but obviously a good enough look to try and tie the score. But I think I would have set up more to try and tie that score up. I don't think I'm trusting anybody else in that moment other than Moore at that specific spot in the game. Not that Kelly can't hit that shot, but I think you got to give it to your best playmaker. And the free throw is good, and that should pretty much put the game away now as it's a four-point game with two seconds to go. As Braintree going to lose a heartbreaker here tonight. In a game they probably should have won with a nine-point lead in the fourth quarter. Two clutch free throws as Braintree 37-32. A long pass, Coughlin for three. It's good at the buzzer. It counts, but that's not going to make a difference in the final score as Coughlin makes Braintree a much closer final result. 37-32 the final score in what was a close game all the way through, but ultimately Braintree obviously not making enough plays in the fourth quarter to win this game, and that's one you really should have had in a game that you need to have a statement victory They've had some tight games that they've lost here this season, but that would have been a good one to have against a very talented Natick team. But Natick obviously showing some weaknesses here tonight that Braintree was able to expose, but able to do enough to win on the road here today by 2-37-35. Again, Braintree got eight from Moore to lead the way, six for Lemire and Ellie. I make that nine for Braintree. And on the other end, Mulholland with 10 points and Chandler with two clutch baskets in the fourth quarter with nine points and ultimately the winning basket in this game. So that'll conclude our live stream broadcast here today of Braintree Basketball against Natick. Thanks for watching here today on VCAM TV. On behalf of John Orfanos, our cameraman, I'm Mike Wassel. We'll see you next time.